Hey everyone, so in this series we've been tearing through all kinds of scams and misinformation regarding water. And as usual, we've saved the best pseudoscience for last. Let's get right into it. In part two, we covered all kinds of special waters you can drink and their alleged health benefits, and we closed with the utterly delusional concept of moon water. This actually leads nicely into our final topic, which is the idea that the properties of water can somehow be altered. The claims we heard regarding moon water are blatantly frivolous and strictly for people who don't know or care about science, which is why no attempt to explain anything scientifically is even offered. But others try to take a more seemingly legitimate and science-based approach to this very concept. First up, there is so-called structured water, also referred to as hexagonal water. What could this possibly be? Let's hear it from the experts themselves. So we've done a little bit of research and we just wanted to share uh, some, some technical definitions and just bring you into the amazing world of structured water so that you can understand how using structured water in your life can really help to benefit your health hmm. and so many other things. So, structured water is a molecular arrangement of water molecules that exists when water is near hydrophilic, water-loving surfaces. Mm -hmm. Much like ice, water molecules join together in hexagonally structured single-layer sheets. But unlike ice, however, the sheets are flexible and move independently as they are not glued together by protons. The majority of the water in your body is structured water as your bodily tissues are hydrophilic. Yeah. So, what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. Once we get past the gibberish, we see the insanity of the primary claim. Structured water is water molecules arranged in this hexagonal geometric structure. What that means is that structured water is ice. This diagram is depicting ice. When water is in the solid phase, like any other substance, a lattice structure is adopted, and the particles do not move with respect to each other to any significant extent. Liquid water does not do this, because that's not what a liquid is. In a liquid, particles move freely. Liquids are characterized by fluidity. Water molecules can briefly form loose clusters that are held together by hydrogen bonds, but any complex substructure of bulk water has a half-life of femtosecond. Seconds. Those are millionths of billionths of seconds, and this is a fascinating area of scientific research that is being misrepresented by charlatans. Any water molecules that retain such configurations for extended periods of time are in the solid phase. Ice. The water in your body is not ice. It's liquid water, and it does not do this, period. But let's hear them continue their sad, sad little pitch. Okay, so... Uh, structured water is water that is in a more energetic form. Right, so it's energized water. It is energized water. It, yes. has, it has more like energy, life, life force energy in it when it's structured a certain way. And our bodies naturally contain this structured water within our cells. Yep, more energy, more life force. More magic, essentially. What they neglect to understand is that if a sample of water had more energy, it would simply be of a vibrational or translational nature, which would be given off as heat until it reached thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. So even the lie they are referring to is literally just hot water. But at any rate, how does nature make this stuff? Now the other interesting thing about structured water is if you're thinking about nature, if you have something like rainwater that mm. falls down on the top of a mountain and it goes through the top of the mountain and it goes through all of the forests and all of the earth and it, it, it's, it's moving through rocks and dirt and tree roots and streams and it gets all the way down to the bottom of the mountain. After it's gone through all those different elementals, that process naturally is structuring the water. And that's why spring water is, right. is so good for you. No attempt whatsoever to explain how water tumbling over rocks and through dirt produces this hexagonal structure. Just the magic of Mother Nature. And that's also why you have more life in water and bodies of water that has something flowing in and out of it. And why when you have stagnant water, yes. that's when you tend to get a lot of death and decay uh, and like bugs and mosquitoes and that, that, that type of thing in like stagnant ponds are really not great. That's right. Stagnant water is full of death and decay and also life like bugs. 
That's not a self-contradicting statement at all. But hey, let's get more into the science mm -hmm. behind this because let's talk about vortexes. Right. Well, the plural of vortex is vortices, but I'll let that one slide. Give me the science, lady. When you actually spin water around, so how does yes. vortexing in general create structured water? So in a properly designed vortex, some water molecules disassociate mm -hmm. into hydrogen and oxygen. So the vortex motion makes it split off a certain way. That's right. Right? No, not right. It's just water molecules moving around. A vortex does not perform electrolysis. Notice that you do not see hydrogen or oxygen gas bubbling up. So what's the end game here, my little scientists? The organite, the energy that comes from our organite, and we've shaped it into a flat, pretty um, charging plate. When you put a glass of water on top of this charging plate, the energy that comes off of the organite plate actually forms a vortex and a structure in the water. And when you freeze it, yes. you can capture that structure in ice. That's right. It's a coaster. They call it a charging plate, but it's a coaster. Notice that they don't show the coaster producing a vortex, because they can't, because it doesn't do that. They just show glasses of ice with an aesthetically pleasing pattern of crystallization. But look out, they have some vocabulary words they want to throw in there. Structured water is energized water. It's like, uh, it's charged. So when you drink this water, the structured water that's in your body, that's in your cells, gets replenished with this energy. So it's like recharging a battery. Exactly. And your body is essentially one big liquid battery. That's right, yeah. So you're refilling the charge in your body. So when you drink structured water, you just have more energy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of problems here, as you would expect. Water can't be charged. It's a neutral molecule. This is not like recharging a battery. It's just ice. They desperately throw out familiar analogies to lend some kind of credence to this circus sideshow by association. And energy is not a substance you can consume. They just don't know what metabolism means. Some people uh, wanted to put it inside of their water filters. We don't recommend you take any of these products and put it inside the you don't, actual you don't need container to. with you the don't water need in to. it. So what you no. need to know is that the vortex, the energy field that's created from these, it travels through things like metal and glass. Metal, glass, ceramics. Right? So, yes. so basically, just sit your water on, on top, top of, of this. It. It's really that simple. But I'll admit, it does look kind of cool. If it were the cost of a regular coaster, I'd buy it and use it as a coaster. Though, I bet it's quite a bit pricier. Now, of course, these 2-bit hacks are just doing their best to regurgitate what others have already said to try and make a buck, and failing miserably. Let's see what slightly more reputable-sounding liars say about structured water. And it turns out that water, when it's what they call structured water or coherent water, has properties that are lost when water has either been subjected to electricity, such as in a reverse osmosis process, mm -hmm. or it has gone through more than 300 feet of straight pipe. You know, um, water, the way it naturally flows, is in, you know, it's a meander. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's in waves. Mm -hmm. And when you straighten that out, you lose some properties, you know, that are very nurturing for us, you know, basically essential to life. This is completely idiotic. I've talked in other debunks about how the properties of a molecule do not depend on how it was synthesized, so natural and synthetic counterparts of the same molecule are completely identical in every way. And I can sympathize with the fact that people with no background in chemistry might not know that. But the idea that the properties of a molecule can change depending on whether they move in straight lines or not? I can't believe this woman can say this with a straight face. She's not the only one. Listen to this fraud named Sadhguru say the same thing, who, by the way, will probably also receive his own debunk at some point, since he is a wildly influential, duplicitous maniac. Today, modern scientists are saying this. If water is pumped through the pipe, if it takes fifty turns, bends, let's say it's pure nice water, fifty bends if it is forcefully pumped through the pipe, sixty percent of it turns in a molecular way unpalatable to the human body. It becomes poisonous in some way. The chemical structure will not change, but the molecular structure will change. 
So the first lady said that if water goes straight in a pipe, it's no good. This guy says that if water takes hard turns in a pipe, it's no good. They can't seem to get their story straight, pun intended. And of course, we have no idea what unpalatable to the human body could possibly mean, nor poisonous in some way. His pathetic attempt at an explanation is that the chemical structure will not change, but the molecular structure will change. Sadhguru does not seem to even know what a molecule is. First, these two phrases are identical. They mean the same thing. Second, if you change the molecular structure of water, it's not water. This is water, H2O. Any molecule with two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom is water, and any molecule that doesn't have this structure is not water, period. You can take this molecule and send it to the moon and back in a straight line or any zigzag path your mind can conjure. It's still a water molecule and its properties will not change. End of story. The properties of a molecule are due to its chemical composition and geometry and nothing else whatsoever. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a science illiterate fraud. Speaking of frauds, there are a few more decorated folks who have pushed this pseudoscience. It all began with this fellow, Gerald Pollock, who managed to build a whole TED Talk out of this rubbish. When water meets certain materials, these, these are hydrophilic or water-loving materials, which means that if you have a surface and you drop the water, it spreads out instead of beating up the way it does, for example, on Teflon. So what happens is that the water molecules split into the positive and negative, and the negative ones line up, uh, as you see here, next to the hydrophilic uh, material. This is uh, actually negatively charged water is, in fact, a different phase of water. It's not even H2O, it's actually H3O2, is what we, what we found. And we refer to this uh, fourth phase, if you will, of water that is beyond solid, liquid, and vapor. This fourth phase is semi-crystalline water as EZ. So what's EZ? EZ stands for exclusion zone. And the reason we called it exclusion zone when we found it is as this phase of water builds, it pushes out everything that's inside of, of, of the water, that is uh, solutes, particles, whatever. And so we called it logically exclusion zone. And EZ uh, is, well, easy to remember. So. <laughs> Remember when I said that if it's not H2O, it's not water? Yeah, this H3O2 business is pure idiocy. What he's referring to is a solvated hydroxide ion. So a hydroxide ion complexed with a water molecule, which is just a fleeting interaction and not an actual molecule. More importantly, hydroxide is not water. It's the conjugate base of water. It's a different molecule. There is no fourth phase of water as is being described here. This is the precise script that was lifted and expanded upon by more outright frauds like this other guy, Dr. Mercola. He's a titan of the alt-health industry, an unrepentant quack for cash, slinging all manner of alternative remedies under an anti-establishment flag that has made fortunes for many other quacks before him. One of my favorite ways of structuring water inside the cell is to induce external energy. And there's two primary ways that you can do that that are useful. So the first one is sunlight. Yes. Thank you. So regular, regular exposure to your sun on your skin. So, and then you're going to get enough radiation into your, into your body to help produce uh, the structured water. And it, of course, makes vitamin D, too. Uh, and that's a, a, sort of a universal understanding of one of the benefits of sun is that you, you, if it's on your skin, you're going to make vitamin D. If light produced structured water, then all the oceans would be structured water. And he's just referencing vitamin D to make his lies seem credible by association. This is a common technique for charlatans. So is saying things like, resonate with this frequency. That get activated and resonate with this frequency. But we covered that at great length in the quantum mysticism debunk. You can really start to see how the snake oil business works with this example of structured water. Somebody invents a lie, cultivates a script with a lot of buzzwords, and then a whole bunch of bottom feeders memorize the script like they're selling Cutco knives, and do their best to present it as though it's some revolutionary discovery. Here's another clown using all the same language and fallacious talking points. We've also subjected water to straight pipes and pumps 
And this is a problem because it de-energizes the water. You see, the way water works is it vortexes. Some even pay money to make fancy animations in order to sell useless products, like machines that allegedly make structured water at home, which cost hundreds of dollars and are literally just cheap blenders. Natural action devices utilize a series of tuned, resonant chambers. The chambers are comprised of special materials which are within the flow form. Through the materials and geometry, the tuned form induces a double vortex in the water as it approaches, enters, and leaves the device. As the water moves through the chambers, a series of subtle impulses occur, which induce temperature and pressure fluctuations within the water. When combined with the double vortex motion, self-organization within the water occurs. We will use the process of magnetism to show how structured water is made. The iron bar has individual particles which represent tiny little magnets. As we align the iron bar to the Earth's magnetic poles and tap it, the particles begin to organize and align. Another example is transfer of field effect. We can take a piece of magnetic iron and through relative motion can transfer organization from one piece of iron to another. The Earth has a magnetic field and is primarily composed of water. The Earth moves and rotates on its axis while in orbit around the Sun and has an iron core. This organization is transferred from one object to another, from the Sun to the Earth to iron and water through quantum and electromagnetic properties. As you can see, they pull out all the stops, tossing around buzzwords like resonant chambers, which don't mean anything. This is just a gizmo that makes water spin around. When it comes out the other side, it's exactly the same as when it went in. Pure water does not respond to magnetic fields or generate them, as anyone can easily demonstrate for themselves. They even claim that the Earth is primarily composed of water, which everyone who is paying attention in elementary school would know is false. It's actually 0.02% of the Earth by mass. And of course, they toss in the word quantum for no reason, just to be thorough. Water in your cells is just water. It's a solvent. Other molecules move around in the water. There is no structured water in your cells, as that's not a thing. This graphic is meaningless cartoons to sell a useless product to people who don't know anything about biology and like it that way. An offshoot of this nonsense regarding the structure of water is the even more frivolous idea that the way water structures itself is influenced by words and emotions. This is a scam pioneered by Dr. Masaru Emoto, who got his doctorate from a diploma mill and whose sole expertise is in crafting pseudoscience. His scam is centered around the practice of projecting thoughts or emotions onto glasses of water. To some, he would shout angrily and say, you make me sick, I will kill you. While to others, he would say, thank you, or I love you. Sometimes also simply writing the words down and placing the paper nearby. Then he would freeze the water, and he claimed that the ones he was nice to or serenaded with lovely classical music made lovely-looking crystals, while the ones he was nasty to or barraged with heavy metal music would make an ugly-looking mess. He made similar claims about water from a mountain stream versus water from a more polluted source. Of course, the results seem stunning. What a difference! Well, in reality, he just subjected samples of water to different conditions upon freezing, like different pressures and rates of temperature change, as the crystallization pattern will depend on these variables. He then arbitrarily paired up the images in a way that aligned with what he wanted people to conclude. Most of them are not even genuine, they are literally just pictures of snowflakes. When invited by famous debunker of pseudoscience James Randi to reproduce the experiment under a controlled setting for a million dollars, he declined. I wonder why. Let's be perfectly clear, there is nothing of substance here, no actual scientific publications. It's a guy who put together some words and pictures to sell a lie. He may as well be saying that he saw a leprechaun. The only reason anyone could possibly believe something like this is because they want to. There is no science to point to. It's just a story. I genuinely don't know what it is about the human brain that makes something this ridiculous so appealing to so many people. What itch does it scratch? Why do we want to be able to talk to water? Today, modern science has recognized that water has memory. 
If you give it a certain thought, this cup of water, it will remember. If you give it a positive thought or a negative thought, a positive emotion, negative emotion, it actually remembers. Shame on you, Ed Begley Jr. You could have called Sadhguru out and you didn't. Why didn't he? And why don't the millions of people who follow this bozo? Because we like the idea that a guy who looks like this must be wise, when in fact he's just recycling the same lies as everyone else. Story over facts, there seems to be something innate there. Speaking of stories, the last tall tale we will investigate is the notion that water can remember what was once dissolved in it. So if you had a bit of some compound in water and you diluted it many millions of times to the point where literally none of that compound is present anymore, the water will still somehow behave in a way that is informed by the former presence of that compound. This is referred to as water memory, and some claim that it serves as the basis for homeopathic remedies. But how could water molecules have memory? Doesn't memory require a brain of some kind? Well, yes, this is just another example of us anthropomorphizing everything we see. Volcanoes erupt because of an angry god that lives inside. Cartoon animals should walk upright and wear pants. And water can remember things like humans do. How did such a preposterous notion gain traction? Well, a prominent French immunologist named Jacques Benveniste diluted some antibodies in water to the extreme degree that there were no longer any antibodies in the sample. He then reported that human basophils reacted to the solution as though antibodies were present. Astoundingly, he managed to publish this study in Nature, a very prestigious journal, but the results could never be replicated and it became widely understood that the study was invalid. Nevertheless, Nobel Prize-winning French virologist Luc Montagnier took an interest with this work and began making similar claims regarding solutions of DNA from pathogenic bacteria and only pathogenic bacteria, as though pathogenicity to humans were some kind of inherent physical property. These solutions were diluted until they contained no DNA, and he reported that they emitted electromagnetic signals that are somehow characteristic of DNA. Again, no one has been able to reproduce these results, because in reality the signal was simply background noise, and the claims are universally accepted as illegitimate by anyone with scientific training. Many researchers quickly skewered the publication itself, which is full of formatting errors and even typos, was not peer-reviewed, and was published in a Chinese faux journal of which Montagnier is on the editorial board. I'll link to several analyses below. This is a rather uncommon situation where pathological science is being done by respectable scientists for who knows what reason, which is then used by purveyors of pseudoscience to substantiate unscientific claims. It isn't the first time that a prominent scientist has slipped over into pseudoscience in their twilight years. There is actually a reasonably long list of scientists who have suffered from so-called Nobel disease, where people who were brilliant in their field got a big head and jumped into areas they knew nothing about. Montagnier himself got the Nobel by fortuitously isolating HIV, which had very important ramifications, though it was not a revolutionary innovation. But even the most brilliant scientists can end up making fools of themselves as they strive to become living legends, unable to disengage from their ego-driven ambitions. Beyond the complete lack of scientific basis for the memory of water, one need only apply basic logic to debunk this ridiculous claim. We drink water from the tap every day. What does it remember exactly, and why can't we detect this? Precisely how is the memory stored? The common answer is networks of hydrogen bonds, but we already dismantled this ridiculous claim when talking about structured water. Of course, in the end, this type of analysis would inevitably fall on deaf ears. Folks like Montagnier play the role of the rebellious trailblazer to great reception by those who couldn't care less about science but like the story. To them, the establishment must be wrong. Big medicine, big pharma, big science, whatever that could possibly mean, is a bunch of corrupt, dogmatic, closed-minded, stuffy know-it-alls, and this one person must be right because they validate the magic some people desperately want to believe in. It doesn't matter how insane the claims, the story will win every time for such people. And these are the ones who, when sick, will forego legitimate medicine in favor of alternative treatments and likely get themselves harmed or killed in the process. So if you think pseudoscience isn't a problem, think again.
So that's all the watery snake oil I wanted to talk about. We may not have covered everything, but the rest is more or less the same. Whether chemophobia, anti-establishment sentiment, or pure whimsy, these narratives can be repackaged a thousand ways. Remember, just because something is for sale, it doesn't mean it has any value whatsoever. Things that are for sale are for sale because people buy them. If there are enough people who are willing to buy some useless thing, somebody is going to sell the useless thing to those people. It all just boils down to advertising. People who sell snake oil offer nothing more than a feeling. This fancy water will make you a better athlete, or more connected with the cosmos, or whatever else a good ad campaign is capable of doing. This is all that is required to validate the existence of the product, which is what makes something like special water such a huge market. If someone can sell you a $500 shirt, they can sell you a $30 bottle of water just as well. It doesn't have to be better than any other bottle. Though they will typically claim as much, simply stating that a product is backed by science is not enough. It's an empty claim. Sadly, some will even go so far as to misrepresent scientific studies or even totally fabricate studies to fool those who do apply some measure of scrutiny. This is why the only way to immunize oneself to these scams is to learn basic science. And I truly mean basic. I know some of you regard me as an expert, but I'm really not. I have some specialized knowledge in chemistry, but in other fields, I just know the basics. And yet, with almost every single scam we looked at in this series, it's unbelievably easy for me to debunk off the top of my head, because the claims that these people are making are so completely and arrogantly incompatible with the most basic chemistry chemical principles, things we've known for centuries that people are supposed to learn in high school. Only hydrogen water required a tiny bit of investigation in the primary scientific literature. I firmly believe that America in particular, but also the global population, will never be able to take control of their own lives and resist manipulation until we find the discipline to gain this basic knowledge. There are a lot of ways to do this. Reading textbooks and taking classes is the most traditional and thorough way, though most people will justifiably find this impractical or at the very least unpalatable. I have many tutorials on my channel that make this a lot faster and easier, as most of you already know. If even that seems daunting, I have condensed the most basic and indispensable information in chemistry, biochemistry, biology, and physics into one short book, with the intent of applying it towards recognizing pseudoscience. I know I've plugged this a few times before, but I genuinely believe it is literally the fastest and easiest way to get the bare minimum knowledge with which to navigate this sort of terrain. It's called Is This Wi-Fi Organic? A Guide to Spotting Misleading Science Online. Available now wherever you buy books. Links in the description below. I truly just want people to understand science, and whether they get that through me or anywhere else, a world where people don't fall for pseudoscience is the world I want to live in, and I'll do my part to help out wherever possible. So let's all strive to be a little less suggestible and a little more skeptical, all while remaining fully hydrated. Tap water through a Brita. I'll see you next time.